This video will help you with any problems involving free charge and induced charge of capacitors where a dielectric has been inserted between the plates. It's not a general introduction to dielectrics. We did those notes in class, but we will review a bit about dielectrics. So here's an example to get us started. We have a capacitor connected to a two volt battery. There's nothing between the plates, just a vacuum, right? And with these numbers that are given, since Q equals CV, right, the capacitance here is 4. Now we take exactly the same capacitor. We don't change anything about it. These may look a little further apart, but they're not supposed to be. And that's really just so I can draw a little dielectric between the plates there. So we insert a dielectric between the plates. And a dielectric means a non-conducting material. It could be solid or liquid or in between, like a semi-solid jelly. So for example, sheets of paper, wood, uh, ethanol, these are all dielectrics. We insert it between the, the uh, plates. And now, even though it's connected to the same battery, and even though it's the exact same capacitor, we haven't changed any of its geometry, we, f we measure more charge on it. So now the charge is 10, and so the capacitance has gone from 4 to 5. It's increased. Okay. All right, when you insert a dielectric, the capacitance will always increase. It will never go down. And so to, and with a different dielectric, this might go from 4 to 10, or even 4 to 30. So different materials create different multipliers. So we sum that all up this way. We say that the capacitance with the dielectric is a multiple of the capacitance with no dielectric, and that multiplier is called the dielectric constant, in our particular example, it was 1.25, and it's different for different materials. Smaller for paper, bigger for ethanol. Uh, so it's often in tables. So that's the relationship you get uh, when you insert a dielectric between the plates of capacitor. Notice it doesn't matter. If you change the voltage, this relationship still holds. The multiplier depends only on the material you insert. Okay? So to answer our initial questions about free charge and induced charge, Look at why this happens. Why does the capacitance get bigger when you insert a dielectric between the plates? So we'll look at the same example again, but this time the plates are drawn bigger so that I can write something inside of them. So look on the left. This is vacuum between the plates, vacuum nothing between the plates, and with a capacitance of 4 and a voltage of 2, Q equals CV, so we get a charge on the top plate of plus 8, so the charge is 8 coulombs. All right. What I'm going to do differently now is draw that. So we'll say Q, and we'll call this side 1, so this is Q1 equals 8, and I'm going to represent that with 8 plus signs. Okay. Every time a plus hits the top, it drives a plus out of the bottom, so the bottom plate becomes negative, equal in absolute value, but opposite in sign. How can this possibly have the same voltage as this? Well, the voltage arises because what do you get when you have one plus plate and one negative plate? You get electric field. And for this lesson, we're going to use represent electric field strength with the number of arrows here. And every plus charge, every pair here, plus and minus, gets one arrow. So this is like a field of 8. The field strength here is 8. So that's the electric field. And the presence of the electric field creates the voltage across the capacitor plates. Because as you remember, we have our equations down here, Q equals CV. But also for a constant electric field, what's the relationship between electric field and voltage? It's V equals ED. OK, now let's look at what happens here. You can argue this two ways. You can do the math here and write in the charges, or you can start from the fact that the voltage is still constant and go from there. We're going to do it the first way. OK, so we saw earlier when we inserted the dielectric material, the capacitance went up to 5. It went from 4 to 5. We're going to show why that happens by actually drawing the dielectric material inside and looking at charges and electric field arrows. So there's our, di our dielectric material. Q equals CV, so the Q now is 10. Q2 is 10 on the top plate. So let's write that and represent it with plus signs. Q2 equals 10. So now I have to draw 10 plus signs. 1, 2, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On the bottom, we'll have ten negative signs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If there were no dielectric, how many electric field lines should I draw? I would draw ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Could it this be could this be the case right here? Could that be the situation? And the answer is absolutely not. Because our electric field now is stronger than it was before, but it's the same spacing. So by this, we would get a bigger voltage, but it's connected to a battery. The voltage has to be the same. Same V. So, same E. But there are 10 lines here, 10 arrows here, and only 8 arrows here. What's going on? Well, inside the non-conducting dielectric, this red arrow field is polarizing the material. And what that results in, what's in the middle all kind of washes out. There are pluses and minuses, and they do get polarized. But this can be represented by thinking that <clears throat> instead of drawing every single atom polarized, we think of that this positive plate has attracted negative charge to this end, and this negative plate has attracted positive charge to this end, and that's called induced charge. And we can represent that with plus and minus signs, positive and negative signs. How many arrows do we need to cancel out so that we have the same E, so that we can have the same voltage of 2? Well, we had 8 arrows here, and now we have 10, so we have to cancel out 2 arrows. And we can show that by saying that this electric field pulls negative charge towards the positive plate and positive charge towards the negative plate, creating a counter field inside the dielectric, pointing the opposite way. We did this in the notes in class, but it was at the end of the notes and we went pretty quickly. Why do I draw two negatives and two positives? because I need to cancel out two of the ten arrows, so I can get the net electric field back down to eight arrows, so I can have the same voltage as before. So that's why we say that there's an induced charge. It's actually on the skin of the dielectric, right on the edge here, of negative two at that end and positive two at that end. So we say the induced charge on this is negative two. Okay, so we have the plate charge of ten. It's the same, and this is just to make the point I was making up here. It's the same voltage, so it's the same electric field, therefore you must have the same net charge. Not plate charge, but net charge. Plus 10 plus this negative 2, which is really close to it. <clears throat> so this whole region here is like a big plate with a charge of plus 8, just like this. 10 on the plate plus 2 induced, negative 2 induced. Same at the bottom, negative 10 on the plate plus positive 2 induced. So now some vocabulary. <clears throat> Here's our empty capacitor. We had 10 charges on the plate. That means 10 positive on top and 10 negative on the bottom. <clears throat> I think I got that right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Not equally spaced, but fine. And this is the <coughs> capacitor with the dielectric. Okay, this charge on the top, Q equals 10 coulombs. Charge on the bottom is negative, 10 coulombs. And then in between the plates, we had a dielectric material. And we saw that we could explain what was going on by saying there's negative 2 coulombs spread all over this outer skin here and positive 2 coulombs spread all along the bottom. So here, this Q, we'll use a lowercase q, <coughs> equals negative 2 coulombs. All right, this charge up here is called the free charge. That's called free charge because it's free to leave the plate if you were to disconnect the capacitor from the battery and put it on a light bulb. This would be free to leave the plate. This is also called free charge. The free charge is the charge on the plate. I, I wish I could call it plate charge, but it's called free charge. So the free charge is the 10 coulombs on the plate. 
Take a wild guess what this is called. This charge that's been induced here. This is called the induced charge. And it might be called negative 2 coulombs, or it might just be called 2 coulombs, giving just its magnitude rather than its sign. Okay, that's called the induced charge. It's not free to leave the, the uh, dielectric and flow through the circuit. So this is the free charge that's on the plate. This is the induced charge that's in the dielectric, negative along the top skin of it and positive along the bottom of it. Okay, let's go back to our example. In our example, if you look at this from the outside and you're not looking at what's inside, of course, this actually had dielectric inside. But if you look at this from the outside, take a look. You could actually figure out from just what's here, you could figure out in this case with the dielectric, the free charge and the induced charge. And we're going to use a principle, a reasoning behind that. We could just write the formula. It's really simple. But in fact, you should look at this. That's 8. And now this has 10 with the same voltage. We haven't changed the geometry. What would the induced charge be? What would the free charge be? Okay. But we'll write the reasoning here. Same voltage. So same electric field. Because V equals ED for a constant electric field. We're not changing D. Okay. So same net charge of what? Same net charge. Well, here the only charge is 8. So this must have a net charge of 8 same net charge of 8 coulomb. So the induced charge here inside on this top edge of the dielectric must be what? Okay, well, to get 10 down to a net of 8, it must be negative 2 coulombs. All right, so that's the general idea of how to figure out induced charge very quickly. By the way, this is not the way I do it in the solutions for one of the problems. Uh, I think this way is, more, is easier to understand. In the solutions, I use Gauss's law. You don't have to do that. All right, so here's the conclusion written as a sort of equation. Here's what we started with, the original Q1. I'll put that Q1. Okay. That's smaller. The bigger free charge, Q2 on the plate, that you actually see on the charge, minus the induced charge that's in the dielectric, equals that original star you started, charge you started with when there was no dielectric for a vacuum. You could say, and that's because the net Q is the same in both cases. Since the electric field is the same in both cases, if the capacitor is hooked up to a constant voltage, if we're keeping the voltage of the capacitor the same. Now let's do the same thing starting here going up. So if the capacitor remains connected to the same battery, no matter what you do to it, the voltages have to be the same, which means the electric fields have to be the same, as long as you don't change the D, the distance. So when you insert a dielectric, the net charge now has to equal the original net charge, which isn't even really a net because there's just the charge. That's just that. So this is the net charge plate. Well, here it is, plate and induced. And this is just the charge on the plates because here there's a vacuum between them. OK, let's finish with an example problem. Very, very similar to the example I've been using, but slightly different numbers. So you should pause the video and see if you can do this yourself. Okay. Same situation, okay. case one vacuum, case two, same exact situation, but we've inserted the dielectric. All right, the charge here, since Q equals CV, okay. the charge would be 40 coulombs. Now we insert a dielectric with K equals 1.5. That's a different K from the situation before, K equals 1.5. The very first thing you can figure out is since you have the old C or capacitance and the K or kappa, kappa, I said K, I should be saying kappa, dielectric constant, okay, you can figure out the new capacitance. It's just this times this, 1.5 times 20. I'll write that down here, C2 uh, equals kappa times C1. Okay, so this will be 30 farads. Next question, figure out the free charge on the plate here. Well, free charge, that's the charge that's in the equation Q equals CV, because it's the charge that's free to move around in the circuit. Okay, so that's uh, in the equation Q equals CV. Okay, so that's 30 times 2, so that's 60 coulombs. And finally, the induced charge. 
Well, you originally had 40 coulombs when hooked to a 2-volt battery. Now you have 60 coulombs when hooked to a 2-volt battery. The net charge really has to be the same. So that means to get from 60 to 40, the induced charge is negative 20 coulombs. We're going to put that negative in parentheses. It's not always given in an answer either in the book or on the AP test. They just may want the magnitude of the induced charge. All right, for problems that where the voltage is not constant, you'd use the same principle, but the problem would be more complex.